odd story is I was watching the documentary on Disney and I went to my sister and I asked her to teach me how to hold a pen and from then on that that was it I was just I actually I, it's strange but I, like I had it in my head like how long is it gonna take for me to succeed at this and I actually I, I determined that at 30 I was gonna be super successful I did you have any questions you know, I'm, you know, if I'm not pushing myself or I'm not working myself into a corner, it's very difficult to get out of. I'm not challenged and I can get really tired and bored. Yeah. The greater family was all from uh, Ireland, the south of Ireland. We're from County Cork um, on the west coast. That's where the name Moran or Morin comes from. I was born in Hackensack, New Jersey. And we moved down to Ramsey, New Jersey when I was three. So I grew up there and then I was in uh, Rutherford, which is different, and then eventually Waldwick. New York was the place to hop on the train and go to, if that makes sense. And all things being equal, I, when New York in the 80s, late 80s, was like a place to leave. You know, it wasn't a place to settle in. And then in the interim, it became a place to live, you know, humidity aside. How are you? Scared away? We weren't allowed to say masses, so they would congregate around a rock in the woods. They would found this uh, big stone, and secretly they'd all meet in the woods and have a mass. And at the bottom of the pit is a coffin, and a wood box, basically, and it's nailed. And the stench is so high that they have to call the the priest to get permission and they want to get rid of it and they don't know what it is and they want to open it but they need permission so they wound up getting the priest that was saying the mass and I from the story goes he didn't get more than like a hundred feet with it and he goes I'll have nothing to do with this you do what you want with it and um, they grabbed it they, they lined up on rifles and they just shot the top of the, the coffin off and they lifted the coffin up, and now at this point they're all gathered around it really tight. So this is like my grandfather telling me this story about his childhood. And with the thick accent, oh Patrick, you're going to hear this way. And there was a kid, about 16 years old, lying. And what he described, and it took me forever to get it, an imp. And he had wee cop, red cop, you know. <laughs> and it was an imp with two thumbs in the boy's neck like that and kneeling on his chest it was like a trippy story and I asked I kept asking him and that's the end of the story but I kept asking him like well, well what happened you know like well, did you pick it up you know <laughs> did you pick a little limp what did you do and he was just saying no oh no no you just looked you looked you looked you looked away and it was gone you know um, but that basically is the stories of my childhood I it's, it's coming to collaboration when they're building the painting as much as I am. You know, I'm there capturing them, but they are also aware that they're being captured, so they, they set up into it. And also now they're posing directly for it. So the magnet's is just the novelty, you know what I mean? I love it, and it'll last forever, and you can, put it, you can even put it in your car and drive around. But that's how you know when somebody's going to buy a painting. They just lock in. There's nothing... Like, every, you know, you can't really blow somebody's sail. I mean, you can blow a sail, but you, if you let them settle in, nibble, nibble, and then, then you know you have it.